But I wanted to make a game, more specifically a horror game. And I'm a huge fan of games like uh, Phasmophobia, Slender Man, whatever it's called, uh, FNAF, and like, fuck, even the, the clones of those games are pretty damn fun. So, I'm happy to announce that I am making a Slender clone. <laughs> Now, before you click off realizing how boring that sounds, just give me a minute to explain why mine's different, alright? Give me a sec. So, I'm actually planning on taking a different route with the story, and I feel like that... Wait, no, don't click off! Don't click off! Uh, multiplayer, level select, different enemies, um... Fuck, stop scrolling! But in all seriousness, I am actually going to try to differentiate myself from the other clones. Also, this is probably the first time any of you have actually seen my full appearance. There's my legs, just in case you haven't seen those either. I look almost identical to the women you see on the podcasts that are like, I think people should stop body shaming. Oh, and they're over here looking like Gorlock the Destroyer. Anyways, starting off with the big question. Which game engine am I going to use? Because there's shit like Unreal Engine, there's Unity, there's fucking, what's the other one? Like Godot, Scratch, you name it. Anyway, I've used Unity in the past where I pretty much just like copied and pasted Bracky's code, so it went like in one ear, out the other, I didn't retain anything that I heard. Yeah, I learnt, I learnt jack shit, I can't lie. On the other hand, I can go to Unreal Engine, where they have like this spaghetti system, which is really common there, a lot of people are using this blueprint spaghetti shit, and it's pretty easy to learn. It's also good that I can use it in like Fortnite maps. I know, look at me, I'm average Fortnite player. So, what game engine did I go with? Well, the answer might surprise you. Drum roll, please. Scratch. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I went with Unreal Engine because the spaghetti is cool. The enemy. It's not that dramatic. I don't know why I said it like that. I started out watching tutorials, but I ended up getting the hang of like this whole spaghetti system. I just had to learn about the different tools to put under my belt. When I was creating this enemy, it was actually surprisingly easy. You pretty much get someone you want to use, give them animation, you know, attach a pawn sensing component so he can look at you and chase after you. Pretty much what he does is he finds a random point on the map and then travels to it and if he sees you while traveling he'll then start chasing after you. He does have a chance to turn the other way while he's chasing you but it's unlikely. The only problem with doing this, I might change this later, but he likes to hang out in the middle of the map. Since he's randomly going from point to point, on average he's just going to end up in the center of the map. I'm pretty sure that's how math works, right? Right. Right. The map. Just like with the enemy, I'm going to start making just one for now, and then I'll expand on that after I have the main core components of the first map down. Where should my game take place? I thought about this for maybe a day. I really like the hotel from The Shining, but I also like an abandoned shopping mall. It has that liminal feeling. The thing with the shopping center is it's too open. The guy'd be able to see you from like the third floor, and he'd chase you down to the first one while you could easily get away by then. That wouldn't really work. The hotel wouldn't really work, the corridors are too tight and narrow, and you just have like a room you can go in on each side, and that's about it. I ended up going with a hospital, just because I thought it'd be cool for like the lore, like you could have a failed experiment, and that guy turned into a zombie, and then the zombie chases after you. You might have to collect little pill bottles to try and cure him. This is not a typical hospital though. I created a large common room in the center with small rooms around the outside. With the rooms around the side, most of them are filled with beds, and then some I'm going to do storage rooms, and then some I'm going to make, you know, I don't know, x-ray room and whatnot. But Carrot, you said the hotel has tight corridors, so why did you make tight corridors on the hospital? Well, I did it because, shut up, the gameplay loop. I don't want the entire map to be accessible from the start. You're going to have to find key cards around the map, where these key cards will unlock certain doors. I might have a master key card that can unlock all doors, but I'm not too sure about that just yet. I totally didn't steal this idea from Lunch Lady or anything. Shh. I'm also still on the fence about a revival system. So currently when the player dies, they are fully dead. They're not coming back until the next game. I might change this in the larger maps because when someone dies, they'll just blast TikTok through the microphone. I've spread out medicine bottles, <coughs> slender pages, as you're going to have to fill up this machine at the back. This machine just checks if you've got all the bottles and then it will win the game. There's one more thing, you also need the enemy in the room next to you. Think of this like the x-ray room, where you go in there and the nurse just says, this is completely harmless, but then proceeds to hop in a World War II bunker and begin to zap you with dangerous amounts of radiation. I want this game to be fast paced, so the enemy is actually going to be faster than you. But you can also hide in rooms if he is chasing you. After a few seconds, he'll run away like the little bitch he is. You can also check for these medicine bottles while you're in the room, just to like give you something to do. And once the coast is clear, you can move out and try run to another room. That means you are 100% safe when you're in the room with the door shut. When you do come out of the room, you're going to have to check your corners, because he could be anywhere in these tight corridors. 
other shit. I added the torch that you can toggle with T. Doors and cupboards were a bitch to get working in multiplayer, but I did get them working, fortunately. I put crouching in the game, but I only gave it a forward animation, so when you walk back, it's like you're just moonwalking. I added a really shitty main menu that I will change later. I included the graphics option for you people that run on a fucking Samsung fridge or whatever it is. I chucked in a sensitivity slider too, because when my mates were playing, they were complaining about the headache inducing speeds. Speaking of mates, I've only implemented LAN at the minute, so if you want to play online, you're going to have to use a VPN. Don't worry though, when the game comes out, there will be a multiplayer system through Steam where you can just join your friends. Easy peasy. There's also a really scuffed lobby, I just realised. In my script, I so said there's a scuffed lobby. I have improved that since I wrote this script, which is like two days ago. So, I'll show the new lobby on screen. Um, it's a lot better than what it was before, trust me. Also, I don't like calling this guy the enemy. So if you have a name for him, please put it in the comments and I'll have a look, I'll choose one. Even more shit. I have a Discord if you want to come chat with me, or if you just want to give me suggestions or tips what to add into my game. Link is in the description. Anyone that boosts my server, I'm going to put your name in the game somewhere. I don't know where yet, but I'll, I'll put it in there somewhere. Also, the first 100 people to join my Discord are going to get an exclusive role that no one else can get. Hit subscribe so I don't become homeless.